Ifua? Executor? Shirley? I have something important to discuss with you. Do you have time? We're on standby. Then... I'll be waiting for you at the Security Special Forces rooftop. Please come see me as soon as you can. It sounds serious from Saki's tone. Could it have something to do with the last Gray Space Entity assault? We better go see her then. I'm sorry to call you all here on such short notice. I feel there's something you need to know about Lin. Miss Lin, did something happen to her? Do you remember the sound that the Christamax parasitized puppet singer made when it attacked? Our technicians have analyzed and processed the sound. We've translated what we've got into human speech. She's calling for... Ruby? If it really came for Ruby, then Lin must have hidden something from us. Both about the monster and Ruby. But why would Ruby have anything to do with it? Ruby's identity has always been mysterious. She suddenly appeared beside Lin about two years ago. Lin only said Ruby was entrusted to her by a friend, but she has never said anything about who that friend was. What's more, we couldn't find anything on Ruby. It seems like Lin is intentionally trying to keep Ruby's identity a secret. After the attack, the reason that she denies that she conversed with the monster is she doesn't want us to know about Ruby's involvement in all this. Why did Miss Lin... do that? <sighs> As per regulation, I've submitted everything I've found to Larson. He will soon be holding an inquisition at Cloudtop regarding Lin. But... before that... I want to see if you two have anything to say. You were there. Did I miss anything that went down between Lin and the monster? Before Dr. Clive suddenly came in and opened fire, the enemy wasn't hostile. It was trying to communicate with Lin. But if Miss Lin wanted to hide this from us, she could have sent Shirley and me away and taken care of it herself. I believe in Miss Lin. She has always acted in the best interest of the people here. There must be something more to this than we know. I also trust that Lin would never betray Mororia, but her actions are, indeed, suspicious. We have to tread carefully for the safety of the city. Harkon Larson wants both of you to be there at Lin's Inquisition. We can only hope Lin can explain all this, but I wonder how deep this rabbit hole goes. Miss Lin, let's go in. Don't forget what I told you before you slept. I remember. Then wait here for me. I'll be right out. Uh-huh. Let's go then. Looks like we have two new faces in our midst. Oh, let me introduce you. These two are Executor and Shirley from District 9. This is... Hello, I'm Sirius. Hey, Lyra, why don't you come and say hi? Greetings, I'm Lyra. Sirius is District 7's High Executor and is dispatched on a mission. Ms. Lyra is the current president of the Madeline Foundation, as well as Archon Larson's special consultant. I'm sorry that my work required me elsewhere. No. Everything happened because of me. Sorry for taking up all your time. Now that we're all here, let's get started. 
Archon Larson. I believe everyone here already knows about what happened a few days ago at the Listener Conference. Despite how the puppet singer was destroyed, and the artificial Christomax was relocated, it has a significant effect on things. Many have started questioning whether or not Miroria's defense systems are able to withstand gray space entity attacks. These concerns are understandable since gray space entity attacks have never happened inside Miroria. If we cannot guarantee our denizens safety, it stands to reason that we will lose their trust. Captain Saki Fuwa has doubled the patrols in Mororia, and Lyra will be assisting in upgrading the city's current surveillance systems. However, these are but contingencies and responses to an emergency incident. We need to prevent similar situations from taking place in the future. Lin, Captain Saki Fuwa should have already relayed the results of the investigation to you. Would you please explain why you concealed the fact that the puppet singer could communicate with you? And what exactly did it say to you? Now that the Security Special Forces reports are out, there's nothing more I could say other than... I'm sorry, Archon Larson. I concealed it not because I have an agenda or harbor ill will. There are just some things that I feel are not... ready for the public eye. Forgive me for being frank, Miss Lin. This thing has profound influences. If we can't work together and solve this crisis together, I'm afraid... Archon Larson, please let me handle the follow-up to this incident. I promise I'll present a satisfactory answer to everyone. I'll just... need some extra time. Lin, I've trusted you. And I'm willing to believe that there is a reason for your actions. However, I cannot allow you to put the whole city in danger. Archon Larson is responsible for the safety of the entire city. Please understand that, Lin. It spoke Ruby's name. That's the kid who hangs around you. The security special forces have completed their investigation into Ruby's identity and past, and found no activities beyond the last two years. Lin, who is this kid? Archon Larson, I vouch for Ruby that she's always been a good kid. I'll educate her well and be held responsible for all her actions. I don't need you to take responsibility. I only want to know what the relationship between that kid and the artificial Christomax parasitized monster is. I... Security alert. All non-combatants, please proceed to the nearest safe zone. Ruby... Archon Larson, please give the order to lock down all exits immediately. You have your orders, Captain Sakifua. Don't worry about me. Captain, that artificial Christomax suddenly went out of control. We're sending machine guards to suppress it. That artificial Christomax again? What's going on with it? Look, the storage vessel for the artificial Christomax is completely shattered. What happened here? The machine guards couldn't stop it. We have to find Ruby. The wreckage went through the room ahead. Captain Saki Fua. Archon Larson. Take Ruby to the infirmary and keep her safe. Uh, yes, sir. Lin, I need an explanation from you. <sighs> the artificial Christomax has caused many security incidents. I hope now you can see how this thing doesn't just affect you and Ruby, but all of us. 
Archon Larson, I will give you all the information I have, but I have a request. You can give me your demands, but I can't promise anything. I need you to give me your word that you'll assure Ruby's safety after hearing what I have to say. Ruby is not really a human. She's the result of an experiment trying to fuse humans and Grayspace entities. What? Ruby... she's... An artificial Grayspace entity. Just like what Dr. Clive did. To a certain extent, yes. Ruby and the artificial Grayspace entity in the listener testing ground are the same. That artificial Christomax may be attracted to Ruby. Do you remember who Rubilia is, Archon Larson? Dr. Rubilia, the first supervisor of Project Listener. That kid is a true genius. If it weren't for the accident, she could have achieved much and given much to Mororia. An accident? Two years ago, in a routine collection mission on the surface, Rubilia went missing in a Grayspace Entity attack. Her project was then handed off to Dr. Clive, who used to be her assistant. Wait, what happened to Dr. Rubilia took place two years ago, and that's also when Ruby appeared in Mororia. Ruby? Rubilia? Rubilia used her own genetic code to fuse with the Grayspace Entity in the experiment. That's how Ruby was born. Fusing human DNA with that of the Grayspace Entity is directly forbidden by Archon Harunobu. What Dr. Rubilia did was... madness! Since her father died, Rubilia's been running those forbidden experiments in her secret lab. I only learned of it when I found her journal by accident. I put a stop to her experiments and sealed off the lab. Out of many concerns, I didn't make it public. Instead, I exiled Rubilia out of Mororia. You mean she didn't go missing because of the Grayspace Entity attack, but it was by your orders? Yes. I... I only wanted this thing to go away at the time. Rubilia's experiments were too extreme. I didn't know what would happen if they went public, so I leveraged my position to conceal it all. If Rubilia really did create a superior abyssant with human intelligence and in human form, but outside of human control, it would be a great disaster for all mankind. Lin, how many like Ruby are out there? Are there any in this city that remain undiscovered? Archon Larson, Ruby is the only test subject left alive. She possesses a human mind. I can assure you that she'll not lose control and become a monster and threaten the safety of everyone. Even if you can prove that Ruby doesn't pose a threat, there has been no change in her situation after she absorbed that artificial Christomax. We cannot be certain if she'll be affected or controlled by the Christomax. Lynn, Executor, and Shirley, please stay here. I'll decide the next course of action after they run a full checkup on Ruby. Larson. I only wish for Ruby to be treated as a human, not a monster locked up in a cage and studied in a lab. I have my own thoughts on this, but I can assure you that Ruby will be safe. Captain Sakifua, with me. Yes. Ruby is still in a coma. We did a full examination on her, but due to her unique physical conditions, we cannot assess her status using normal human standards. Dr. Clive is assessing Ruby's situation, but he informed us that it might be difficult to do so with our current technology, since she's the first human hybrid. Lynn, there must be some research data left behind in Rubilia's lab, right? Yes. Even though I sealed off the lab, I did not destroy the research data. I planned on revealing the whole thing once Project Listener made some progress. We're facing a problem, and the redacted data may hold the key to solving it. We cannot wait any longer. Only you know the location of the lab, Lin. I will need you to take a team and retrieve the research data. Yes, sir. I'll send someone to go with you. 
The safety of Mororia hangs in the balance, and we cannot afford another accident. Archon Larson has told me all about it. Miss Lin, it seems like you've kept quite a number of things from us. Serious? Miss Lyra? Lin, long time no see. Miss Lyra will remain in Mororia to assist us with this investigation. Sirius will go with you to the restricted experiment zone. Lin, do not disappoint us again. <laughs> oh, you got Archon Larson so mad? If you have time to chit-chat, why don't you contribute to planning our next move? Huh. Looks like we're the ones tasked with a special op. Captain Lin, what dangerous mission will we be going on this time? Why so serious? We're just investigating an abandoned lab, aren't we? Huh? Archon Larson recalled me for an emergency situation, and it turned out to be such a simple mission? Your mission is not just to assist with the investigation, but to keep an eye on me. I am now in your charge. Miss Lin, that's not a nice thing to say. I'm only here to help you complete the mission, and that's all. Miss Lin, what do we have to know about that lab? There are no security systems installed in the lab, but it holds a great number of Grayspace entity samples. The samples should either be in stasis or deceased, but... We really don't have enough information. Stay vigilant. I have relayed the lab coordinates to you. Make sure you've received them. If there are no further questions, let's head out. This is the entrance to the lab. Well, this is a secluded place. I'm impressed that Rubilia could find it. Before Rubilia repurposed it into her lab, it used to be an abandoned factory. I'll take you straight to the testing labs. Stay close, and don't wander off. The lab's primary power has been cut. We'll need to restore the lighting first. The power control console is right over there. This was used as a showroom for data on Phase 1 of Project Listener. Even though the information is already public, you can still take a look around, if you want. How many things did Rubilia hide in here? The entire Project Listener Phase 1 research is here. We're only seeing a small part of it. Oh! Look out! You better be careful. It's not over yet. Lin, you didn't say the Grayspace entities may still be active here. Maybe a test subject got free. Stay on your toes and prepare for any surprise attack from Grayspace entities. The lower labs are right up ahead. Follow me.
place gives me the chills. The Grayspace entities in stasis were key subjects used for Rubilia's research. We may be able to find some clues that I missed previously. There are only some research samples here. The key research data is kept in Rubilia's quarters. Follow me. That small room ahead is Rubilia's living quarters. Is Dr. Rubilia living there all by herself? N no way. There's no way we can get through so many gray space entities. She's no mad scientist. They were just things that she... <sighs> had to do. Let's head inside. Maybe we'll find some useful information. Tell Larkon Larson if I were to go back empty handed. What is this? Features do not match. Verification failed. Move out of the way. Features do not match. Verification failed. Retrieving alternative data. Features match. Identity verified. Oh. Lynn, Rubilia left this lockbox for you, didn't she? We all saw it. Rubilia has never mentioned anything about it to me. This lockbox. It's really well hidden. Wonder what's in there. <laughs> now I'm curious. I'm not sure what's inside. The internal workings of this lockbox are extremely intricate. Opening it by force will likely damage the content inside. We better take the lockbox back to Miroria first, and see what Archon Larson wants to do with it. Fine. You keep the lockbox safe, Sirius. This may be the most valuable find in this investigation of ours. Fine, fine. At least it's something to tell Archon Larson. I don't want to stay here a second longer than I have to. The facilities have not been maintained for a long time. Other test subjects may have gotten free as well. We should hurry. Saki? How's Ruby? There is no sign of her waking up yet, but all the numbers show her to be in a stable condition, with no fluctuations. Lynn, did you get what you need? We've found a lockbox left behind by Rubilia. We are just about to give Archon Larson a report. Archon Larson is still awaiting updates at Cloudtop. Go. I'll stand guard here. I'll notify you as soon as there's any news on Ruby. Thanks, Saki. Let's go. Lin, is there nothing else you can do with the lockbox Rubilia left behind? I'm sorry, Archon Larson. Rubilia never said anything about a lockbox to me. It was Sirius who found the hidden compartment inside, by accident. 
it'll all be for nothing if we can't find any clues to open this lockbox. Archon Larson, this lockbox's model was widely used in the Madelin Foundation. Maybe I can attempt to decode it without corrupting the data inside. Miss Lyra, how confident are you? Don't worry, Archon Larson. I'll immediately stop whatever I'm doing if something goes wrong, to ensure the data inside remains intact. Miss Lin? Please. Sign doesn't seem to have been fully deciphered. We went through everything for this? Miss Lin, the data inside the lockbox is incomplete. I cannot decode anything more from it. Only a blurry video clip? Miss Lyra, could some data be corrupted during the decoding process? No, I assure you, there's nothing I did that would have compromised the data inside. What we saw was the entirety of the data. Why did Dr. Rubilia leave a piece of meaningless info in a hidden compartment? Sirius, did you find anything else noteworthy on site? Unless... there are more hidden compartments, but... Rubilia doesn't seem like a person who'd bother with it. Right, Lynn? Sorry, but I don't have anything for you at the moment, Archon Larson. Please excuse me. I'll need some time to think. We'll call it a day for now. Dr. Clive, you and your team have to decipher and learn what you can from the data retrieved by Lynn and Sirius ASAP. Yes, sir. As for the lockbox, I'll ask our technicians to restore the data and hope for the best. I saw Lynn left alone just now with a solemn face. I didn't dare to call her. Is she in some kind of trouble? Miss Lyra unlocked the lockbox, and we found a recording left behind by Dr. Rebellion there. It's blurry and, unfortunately, doesn't shed light on anything. Despite that, we found some lab data on Ruby, but what's in the lockbox must be crucial. That's probably why Lin is in a bind right now. Is that so? Then Lin must have gone to... that place. That... place? Lynn would sometimes stand on the balcony of the Oasis to think. After Ruby came, she often took Ruby there too. Ruby always said it's her secret base. After everything that has happened, I'm worried about her, but... I have to stay here to watch over Ruby. Can you please check on her for me? Hmm... Well, let's go see Miss Lynn for a bit. Even if we can't comfort her, at least we can let her know that we're all there for her. I just wanted to be alone for a while. Sorry for worrying you. How did you find this place? Captain Sakifua told us. It has a nice view, and it's quiet, unlike in the city. Did Ruby draw all those things? It's our little secret base. Ruby loves it here. Is that Dolly and Spark? They were best friends. They wouldn't even let me in on their secrets. Spark must know a lot of Ruby's secrets. 
Secrets. Spark. Spark. How come it only occurs to me now? It's long been left with me. I'll keep Ruby safe. And I'll find you. Just you wait. Blynn, you mean... Spark can help us decode the info in the lockbox? Spark is a support unit specially designed by Rubilia. It may contain a controlled runtime or supplementary data related to the lockbox. What Lin said was... indeed possible. We may have the data, but not a way to read the data. Spark may be the thing we need. Archon Larson, please wait in the infirmary with the rest. I'll take the lockbox there and try to use Spark to decode it. Fine. Get the lockbox to the infirmary, Lyra. Lynn, I can't imagine what you're feeling while reading this message. Is Ruby all right? I'm sorry that I lied to you, but you know I had no other choice. Now that I've hit a wall in my research into the gray space entities, I will be going into the confounding abyss. It has what I need to proceed. Maybe I'll solve the mysteries surrounding the gray space entities and take them back to you. Or maybe I'll be gone, just like the Forerunners. Anyway, that's all. Good luck to you. And thank you. So Rubilia went there. What does she intend to do? Archon Larson, I suggest that we immediately relaunch the exploration of the Confounding Abyss. If Rubilia was really in there, it would be in our best interest to locate her ASAP. Lynn, do you think Rubilia could have survived in a place like the Confounding Abyss? I don't know. However, in the message she left, she said there was something she needed inside the Confounding Abyss. She knew very well how treacherous that place was, and I believe she had taken all precautions. I agree with Miss Lynn. Dr. Rubilia's knowledge of the Gray Space Entities far exceeds ours. If we could find her, or at least more of her research data, it would greatly benefit us. Just a moment, you two. Rubilia left this video clip over two years ago. We cannot be sure if she really did go into the Confounding Abyss, or if she is still alive. Even if we are to relaunch the exploration into the Confounding Abyss, It'll take a lot of time to get everything prepared. I trust that no one wants to repeat the same tragedy. Lyra is right. Before we relaunch the exploration, we better be fully prepared for anything. Lifting the lockdown on Confounding Abyss will take some time. Go and take some rest and relaxation. I'll have Captain Saki Fuwa contact you when we make progress. You look like you have something to say. Miss Lin, what kind of place is that confounding abyss that you just talked about? About that. Few people in Mororia know this, but you should have heard about the Second City, right? We've seen it in the archives. Well, about 20 years ago, Mororia's exploration teams discovered a gigantic underground space and proposed plans for a third city. Within the following years, after the underground space was discovered, Mororia must have sent hundreds of explorers in different batches to lay the foundation for the project, and... explore its depths. Everything was going smoothly, then all contact was suddenly lost. No communication, no responses, everything just went dead. The people, the equipment... There's no sign of either. What's more, its terrain seemed to have undergone drastic changes. Nothing obeyed our known laws of physics. It seemed to be a gateway to another world. So that's why it's called the Confounding Abyss? That's right. Also, based on the images sent back by the droids, 
There are ruins left behind by an unknown civilization on the other side. It has been a closely kept secret within Mororia. Unknown civilizations? Aliens? We know nothing about those ruins and who built them, but there are signs of Grayspace entity activity there. Maybe that has something to do with the disappearance of our survey teams. Still, we have no way of safely investigating the area. That's why Mororia locked down the entrance to the Confounding Abyss. Until now. Miss Lin, where exactly is the Confounding Abyss? Now, right beneath our feet and underneath Mororia, lies the pit that is the entrance to the Confounding Abyss. What? If the Confounding Abyss really is that dangerous, why is Mororia still here? There's a subgravity field in the region where Mororia is. Scientists couldn't understand what caused it, but the anti-gravity engines which kept Mororia afloat rely on that field to function. Then, when the Confounding Abyss was discovered, they realized the subgravity field was caused by the Abyss's effects on our laws of physics. In other words, the current state of Mororia relies on the delicate balance between the Confounding Abyss and our reality. But that also makes Mororia a prisoner to the Confounding Abyss. The Second City Project is underway, but it's far from being able to provide for the denizens of Mororia. This may be why Archon Larson is so concerned about relaunching the exploration operations. If our actions somehow broke the balance between the Confounding Abyss and our reality, the whole city would pay for our failure. That's... truly unbelievable. As you can see, this is a very risky operation. We better wait for Archon Larson to make the final decision. Executor, Archon Larson invites the both of you to attend the meeting at the headquarters. It's about the Confounding Abyss. Has Archon Larson decided to relaunch the exploration operations? Maybe. I'm almost at the headquarters. I'll see you in a bit. We called everyone here today for the relevant affairs of Rubilia and Confounding Abyss. I have now decided to relaunch exploration of the Confounding Abyss. Since we all know what the Confounding Abyss has in store for us, Miroria cannot turn a blind eye to the risks this may bring. So I will not be investing too much manpower and resources in this project. We will only be organizing a small recon op to learn the current status of the Confounding Abyss and collect as much intel as possible for further analysis. Also, the primary objective will be to try to locate Dr. Rubilia. Lin, since you started this thing with Rubilia, you should be the one to end it. I will be sending you in with Sirius. Understood. Archon Larson, I want to be part of this operation. Surely, this mission is highly dangerous. You... I want to unveil the secrets of the Grey Space Entities. Please, allow me to come with you. Count me in. I want to join the operation as well. If that's so, Lyra, why don't you brief everyone? The space inside the Confounding Abyss is too unstable to maintain a space rift for long, so the mission squad will be equipped with a mini space rift generator to establish a temporary space rift. However, please beware that this temporary space rift will only allow a single person to travel through at any given time, and will need to be recharged after each use. Additionally, all records show that communication between Miroria and the Confounding Abyss may be prone to heavy interference. Do not be alarmed when this happens. If there are no further questions, we'll meet up at the entrance to the Confounding Abyss. Now that we're all here, let's get ready to head out. Miss Lyra. I will lift the lockdown on the entrance to the Confounding Abyss. However, due to safety concerns, once you're through, we'll lock it down again from this side. You will need to establish temporary space rift nodes within the Abyss ASAP. Miroria will try to maintain communication with you and provide feedback based on your real-time data. Is everyone ready?
If you encounter anything more than you can handle, contact us immediately. Do not act recklessly. I will. Let's go. Stay on your toes and keep moving. Lyra, we've reached the ruins of the Third City. Nothing out of the ordinary so far. Roger that. Communication signal is stable. That's good news. The entrance to deeper levels lies within the ruins of the city. Lynn, locate the entrance as soon as you can and establish a space rift once you're inside. The squad sensor will feed the environmental data to our technicians and will give you the coordinates of a good location to set up a space rift. What should we do if our communication is down? We know nothing about what goes on inside the abyss, so trust your training. Right. <laughs> That's a good answer. <laughs> Thanks. We'll need to establish at least one temporary space rift for the follow-up operations. Time is of the essence. Let's move out. Lyra, we've reached the entrance to the deeper levels. The squad's status is green across the board. We've yet to encounter any abyssant grayspace entities. Roger that. The deeper levels of the alien ruins are located just below. We haven't detected any abnormal spatial fluctuations. You may enter when ready. Has the confounding abyss devoured other regions of the city already? The third city was divided into the upper and lower cities. Where you are now is what used to be the upper city. As for the confounding abyss, it's like a ghost that suddenly appeared between the two areas. An existence that defies all logic. A scout drone once reached the bottom of the confounding abyss and sent back some images before its signal died. The lower city still exists, but it's beyond recognition, as is the terrain. Get ready. You are about to enter the heart of the confounding abyss. It only gets more dangerous inside. Communication with Miroria may be unreliable. Watch each other's backs and be safe. on your end we are now within the confounding abyss we have visuals of the alien ruins we've detected slight omnium fluctuations around your area the nature of those fluctuations matches with the signals from your space rift beacons it's a high possibility that it may be a beacon left behind by rubilia you should set up a temporary space rift here as your emergency extraction point understood we'll look around Is that... a Space Rift beacon left behind by Rubilia? Maybe we can try to reactivate it. The Grey Space Entities are still a bit hostile. But at least they didn't attack me on sight. That means my Grey Space Entity Christomax implant is working. This is... a video message from Rubilia. Overall, things are going smoothly. I did lose my supply backpack while scaling the cliff. All I have now is half an energy bar in my pocket. I wonder how long it can last me. I have long passed the point of no return. Maybe this is the end of the journey for me. Lynn, the doctor. She must have left other clues. Continue your search. Lyra? Can you hear me? Lynn, go ahead. We found a space rift node and a video message left behind by Rubilia. We're continuing our search. Roger that. Communication. Interference is increasing. Keep in touch. I haven't eaten nor had any water for three days. However, dehydration is not affecting me much. And the feeling of thirst is declining. 
I think the Christomex implant is changing me. I can feel their special energy within the space that is slowly being absorbed by me. This feeling is becoming more and more tangible. I believe this special energy matter is what sustains the gray space entities. They are unlike us humans. They don't need to turn food into energy. Now, very few gray space entities take note of me, and they are no longer hostile at all. Maybe to them, I'm just a deformed gray space entity. I had a strange dream last night. I... I cannot recall the dream exactly, but I remember the voice I heard in the dream. I can still hear it, even after I woke up. It's... something deep, low, and slow. Not unlike the whale songs in the ocean. But I don't know whether it's in my head playing tricks on me, or is it something real? The Christomax implant may be affecting my central nervous system. I am... slowly losing control of myself. <sighs> I'm running out of time. The Christomax implant is slowly turning the doctor into a gray space entity. I hope she knew what she was doing. The voice in my head still lingers. It's there, calling. I just can't answer it. I've tried to get us to that alien room, but every time I do, nearby gray space entities get restless, like they are able to sense an infiltrator. I can't figure out who it is. But I'm not sure how much camouflage my alteration gives me, so I'm hesitant to try to reach the ruins again. I need time to change into them. Lyra? Lyra? Communication is cut off. Yeah, I can also feel the atmosphere becoming tense around here. Should we keep moving, or wait until the communication is restored? It's highly unstable here. We better not dawdle. Let's keep moving. Whatever you say. I tried to reach the gate to the ruins last night. Those horrific things surrounded me. They looked dumbfounded, but not hostile. I wonder if that means they've accepted me into them. The burning sensation caused by my implant is gone. Any sensations on my skin are becoming dull. My central nervous system is losing functionality. Replaced by a kind of indescribable sensation. The voice in my head is becoming clear, but sharp. And I'm finding it hard to focus my mind on thinking. It's definitely not good news to me. Before the voice in my head completely devours me, what more can I do? Maybe it's time to open that gate. I have a feeling that the answer I seek lies behind that gate. There are no second chances for me now. I, Rubilia, a human, will embrace my own end there. Haranobu, Lin, Ruby, I can only hope that I didn't disappoint you. Our objective must lie within. Lin, do we just go in like this? You're scared? No. It just feels... <laughs> strange.
It's Rebellia's body. What did she do to herself? We've detected large numbers of gray space entities converging on your location. Evacuate stat. Understood. The capacity of the space rift is limited. We'll need to go through it in pairs. Sirius, take her back. Yeah, be careful. Don't worry. <sighs> That's good to hear. Len and Sirius were recalled to headquarters already, and we just received news that Ruby came too. Ruby's awake? Right. Miss Len said Ruby waking up might have something to do with us rescuing Dr. Rubilia. We better check on her, since you don't have anything to do at the moment. I remember. In my dreams, there's a red eye in the sky. A red eye? The eye stared at us. I was so scared, so I ran away with Spark. I followed Spark and ran, ran, and ran. But then Spark disappeared. I was all alone. Night fell and then... I don't remember what happened. All I remember is that it was dark and cold. Don't be afraid, Ruby. We're here with you. You're back, Executor. Miss Lin, how is Ruby? Lyra said that Ruby woke up from a nightmare, but before she did, she mumbled the name Innes. Innes? Innes was the name of the second city built by Mororia to house its increasing population. It's located northwest of Mororia, and extends all the way from an underground cave to the bottom of the sea. But Ruby has never been to that underwater city. I don't know how she knew about it. Besides, Ruby is yet to be able to accurately debrief us on what she saw in her dream. She does not even remember ever mentioning the name Innes. I mean, she was just woken up and is not completely stable. I plan to let her rest for a few days. Let's go check on Rubilia first. She's in another lab, under Archon Larson's watch. Lynn, are you going away again? We'll be back soon. I promise. The doctor's brain activity remains at a low level. We've attempted to apply different amounts of weak electrical stimulation without success. Dr. Clive suggests that we transfer Dr. Abilia to the listener testing ground for in-depth studies, but I feel that's... We cannot treat Rubilia as one of them. We'll discuss this later. Sirius, did you say Dr. Rubilia was found inside an abyssant? More accurately, it's from inside the Abyssin's brain. I'm not sure whether the Abyssin evolved from Rubilia, or if she shared a kind of symbiotic relationship with it. The Christomax implant caused changes in her, which made common low-level Grayspace entities see her as one of them. However, we have no way of knowing if this also works on higher-level Abyssins and what the end stage of this evolution would be. Sadly, the doctor is unable to communicate with us. But judging by Ruby's dreams, and how she mentioned Innes, the doctor must have important things to tell us. Ruby said she saw a glowing red eye in her dreams. I wonder if she's talking about that alien ruin in the abyss. It does resemble an eye in a glance. But Ruby has never been to the confounding abyss and seen the ruins. Maybe Ruby and Rubilia share a special bond that links their senses or consciousness. Ruby's dream may be a projection of Rubilia's dreams. I agree with Lynn. It also matches the data we found in the lab. The gray space entities share a hive consciousness. Rubilia and Ruby, and even that puppet singer, are all part of the same colony. Right, that makes sense. The message Rubilia left in the Abyss also clearly states that she's been affected by the voices in her head. That voice may come from a higher class Abyssant. But these are all hypotheses. 
We'll have to wait for Dr. Robilia to regain her consciousness to be sure. Before that, she could only relay information to us via her shared consciousness with Ruby. Everyone, everything that has happened today is on a need-to-know basis. We cannot reveal Dr. Rubilia and Ruby's identities to the denizens of Mororia. Lyra, you and Dr. Clive must find a way to wake Dr. Rubilia up ASAP. In the meantime, the facility must remain secure. <sighs> and about Ruby. Lynn, you'll be responsible for her. Please take care of her. Yes, sir. As for Innes, we still don't know what Rubilia was trying to say. But if she has really become a part of Abyssin's hive consciousness, then she holds much information that is vital to us. I will have Innes's security level raised. Even though there is currently no gray space entity activity there, Mororia must still be prepared. <laughs>